It's not just planets that can have fancy rings. It turns out that asteroids can have them too. JWST has just watched the rings of one of these asteroids pass in front of a distant star and cast a shadow in the light we receive. This is called an occultation, and the precision required to see it is absolutely mind-boggling. The asteroid in question is called Chariplo, and in 2013, we discovered that it has two very thin rings around it. You can get a feel of what it looks like in images like this, but just remember that these are all artists' impressions and they aren't real photos. Chariclo is about 2 billion miles from Earth, beyond the orbit of Saturn, and is only 160 miles in diameter, making it about 51 times smaller than Earth. The rings then orbit Chariclo at a distance of about 250 miles and are very thin. All of this means that it's way too small, even for JWST to resolve the rings from the body. So occultations like this are the only way we can study those rings. That's actually how the rings were discovered, through occultation. By watching a distant star and measuring the amount of light we receive, we can see dips in that starlight when objects pass between us and that star, blocking some of the light. This takes good timing to catch small objects pass in front of a star, and even better telescopes to measure it precisely enough to see the dips. Despite the challenges, it was successful. And when Chariclo passed in front of the star, they saw two dips as the ring passed in front of the star, briefly blocking light. Chariclo then passed in front itself and blocked the starlight almost completely. And as it moved past, the star blinked twice more as the rings moved past as well. While we already knew that the giant gas planets Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune had ring systems, we had just discovered rings around the asteroid for the very first time. Well, Chariclo is actually a type of object known as a centaur. That's a small solar system body whose orbit is usually somewhere between Jupiter and Neptune. JWST has now repeated this kind of observation, again with incredible success. Once it was calculated that Chariclo was going to pass in front of a star, JWST was pointed in that direction and watched it closely. This time, the angle of the telescope relative to the occultation meant that it only saw the rings block starlight, but didn't see the asteroid itself block any light. We can see this in the light curve that JWST recorded, along with a depiction of what happened. These circles here show the path of the star from our point of view. This is when the rings first pass between us and that star, and we can see a dip for each ring. While it might look like only one dip, if we zoom in, we can see two separate dips in the light here as the two rings pass in front of the star. Later on, we then see two more dips as the system keeps moving, and the other half of the rings take a turn blocking light. At no point is there even a bigger and longer dip where Chariclo itself passes between JWST and the star. In fact, as you can see here, it passed just below the star from our point of view. With further analysis, the exact shape of the dips should tell us about the exact shape, thickness, size, and colors of the rings, and might even reveal more fainter rings as well. While the two rings are likely made of small particles of water ice, there's probably also other material in there too, from objects impacting with Chariclo. So learning what else is in these rings will be incredibly interesting in the future. This is also the first time we've used JWST in this way, to study solar system objects with an occultation, but will certainly be repeated many times in the future. We actually also have a video of the event too, Although, admittedly, the size and distance of it all means the resolution isn't great. The Chariclo system is here, and the star with its long name is fixed in the centre. As I mentioned, we can't actually resolve the rings from the asteroid, so they're all contained in this bright blob. Over time, we see Chariclo pass in front of the star, and this is when the light blocking occurs. The video is made of 63 individual frames from the near-infrared camera NERCAM on JWST and were taken over the course of an hour on October 18th, 2022. Interestingly, right before the event, JWST was actually in position to see Chariclo occult the star as well. Unfortunately, but understandably, just a couple of days before the transit occurred, the telescope had to perform a routine course trajectory maneuver, and that meant that it no longer saw Chariclo occult the star in its field of view but it still managed to capture the rings. And that is awesome if you ask me. If you look carefully, just before the dips, you can actually see the light increases very briefly. This is due to diffraction around the rings, momentarily increasing the brightness of the starlight we saw. Yes, that is the same diffraction effect that causes big spikes on bright objects in other JWST images. And there are more details of that in this video here. Pretty soon after the occultation, JWST pointed at Chariclo again, 
This time on Halloween 2022. It collected sunlight reflecting back off the asteroid and using its near infrared spectrograph NERSPEC, it broke down the light into its component wavelengths and used this to study what elements and molecules make up the system. Another plug, but you can see this video for details on how all of that works. Most of this reflected light came from the main body of Chiriklo rather than its rings. But in the future, more observations using JWST's high resolution and precision instruments may allow us to see distinct signals from the rings. This might be done by observing Chiriklo over several years and hoping that the viewing angle of the rings changes enough to help us isolate the contributions in the signal that comes from those rings. What we did see was three separate absorption bands from water ice, meaning Chiriklo is likely made of ice or at least covered in it. Maybe its core is made of rocky material and it has thick ice on the surface. Or maybe it's an entire block of ice. Either way, this is the first time we can confirm the presence of ice in the system. Although ground-based telescopes had hinted at this before. Give me your thoughts and questions on all of this in the comments below. And subscribe if you're new for loads more space content on the channel. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.